You guys have been loving my pure performance build guides lately, but honestly, man, I've been missing my aesthetic builds. So today, I built both. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to build a $600 gaming PC like this one that's all about the FPS per dollar value with no aesthetics, while this build is clearly more aesthetic focused, but still packs a punch. We honestly should be doing this for every single build guide video in the future, but unfortunately that would probably be a little bit too expensive, so you'll have to let me know down in the comment section which one of these builds you prefer. We're of course gonna compare the similarity and differences in the parts list, as well as the performance benchmarks, all after a quick word from today's spot. Sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, and you probably already know that I've been using them for so long to activate Windows on a ton of my own builds. They're actually running a huge sale right now, which boosts my normal 18% discount up to 25% off if you use code ZTT18, and I'll have that linked at the top of the description. They not only have Windows keys, but also a ton of other stuff such as Office, and even game keys for platforms like Steam, Origin, and Uplay, and they even have console stuff too, like PSN prepaid cards as well. Activating Windows is super simple and only takes like 3 minutes total, so activate windows today and remove that nasty watermark and don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off. Alright so to make this easy we're going to start with all of the parts that are the same in both of these builds and then we'll talk about the differences. At the end of the day any $600 build that's competently put together should have roughly the same framework and these two builds definitely do. We're not so different you and I. Starting with the motherboard this is the ASRock B450M ACR 2.0 and I've said this so many times already but this board just continues to go on crazy sales all the time. I snagged mine up for $55, which is why I bought a bunch of them, but I see this peak around $65, $55, and sometimes even $50. Starting with just a standard micro ATX B450 motherboard gives you so much flexibility, and that board will work with ultra budget builds at like $300, and that'll scale all the way up to like an $800 or $900 build as well. AM4 has some incredible options that scale from like a super budget Ryzen 5 3600 for 60 bucks on AliExpress, and you can get up to like a $300, 5800X3D. This specific motherboard model has four RAM slots, built-in Wi-Fi, and it's a pretty clean and basic design. It's not going to help you achieve any overclocking records, but it's going to get the job done for a budget build for sure. The next similarity we have here is the SSD, and that's because pretty much every $600 PC is going to have a 1TB NVMe, and with B450, we really only need a Gen 3 drive. If you search on PC Part Picker, you'll see a couple models available around the $60 mark, which is what I paid, but this time I specifically got the silicone power 1TB A60 drive, which is one of my go-tos. Again, we're not breaking any records or anything, but these 2200 over 1600 speeds are perfectly fine and fast enough for these types of builds. And finally, the last similarity we have in both builds is the power supply, and that makes sense because we only really need a certain amount of wattage for a $600 build. In general, in a $600 gaming PC, you're most likely going to be able to spend around $200 to $250 on a GPU, and if you're only buying brand new GPUs for that price range, 550 watts is definitely going to be fine no matter which one you choose. Now sure, if you happen to snipe a one in a lifetime deal on a used graphics card, you may find one that requires more wattage than that, but for new GPUs that are available, this MSI MAG A550BM will certainly get the job done for us. This is a tier C rated unit, and it's been a very popular option for us budget builders lately because it's been available for 50 bucks on Amazon every day of the week. All right, so now that we have the motherboard, the SSD, and the power supply covered, let's start talking about the differences of these builds, and we're gonna start with the aesthetic build as our framework first. Since I knew I was gonna spend some extra money on things like an RGB cooler, a fish tank case, and cable extensions, I knew I probably couldn't afford a Ryzen 5 5600, so the CPU I chose is the Ryzen 5 5500. This is actually a very popular choice in the flipping community because it is pretty close to performance of the 5600, but you can pick it up brand new for less than 90 bucks. This still has six powerful cores and 12 threads, so it's honestly perfect for a 1080p gaming PC, especially where you're trying to save some money. For cooling duties, we definitely could have used the stock cooler that came with the 5500, but with aesthetic in our mind, you know I had to go with the Thermalrite Assassin X 120 SE ARGB. This is always my go-to choice for these budget white builds because it performs great and only costs $19 on Amazon. Next up, we have the RAM, and this is the Glowway White 2x8 GB DDR4 kit that's clocked at 3200 MHz, and this will normally run you about 40 bucks. I actually found mine for a killer deal for $29 on Amazon, but for the purpose of this build guide video, we'll use $40 as a reference point since that's more realistic. Housing everything is none other than the DIY PC 
RGB Q3. And again, this is a very popular choice for the budget PC flipping community right now. For $63, sometimes on sale for even cheaper than that, you're getting that meta fish tank dual chamber design and it even comes included with three pre-installed ARGB fans. Honestly, it's a pretty good looking case for being so cheap. The cable management isn't terrible and shout out to Sam for this management job, by the way. And then of course, to tie in the color scheme, we have the easy DIY cable extensions. You can pick these up for 20 bucks and there's a bunch of different brands to choose from. So at this point in the build now, I've spent about $400 in the PC so far, which means that we have $200 left for the GPU. And you know, there's no better option than the RX 6600. There's not a single better brand new $200 option compared to this RX 6600. And it's a beast in 1080p gaming. And we'll see that in the benchmarking section soon. I was actually surprised to see that they even have a white model available now like this ASRock model. And it was only 10 bucks more at $210. Overall, here's what the entire parts list is looking like for our $600 white aesthetic build. And the total project came out to 606 bucks. Again, that's using realistic RAM pricing. I actually paid less than $600 for mine, but this is about what you should shoot for if you're shopping today. But now let's transition over to the pure performance side of things. And we're gonna talk about where you can spend that extra money when you don't have to buy a fish tank case, cable extensions, and an RGB CPU cooler. Starting with the CPU, this is obviously the first area where we wanna spend some more money, but I didn't wanna go too overboard because we wanna save extra money for a better GPU as well. I opted to go with an AliExpress Ryzen 5 5600, which I scooped up for $106. And this kind of splits the difference up to that normal 135-ish level of pricing that you'll normally see on Amazon or Newegg. If you're following this at home and just don't like AliExpress for whatever reason, then feel free to either spend a little bit of extra money or just stay with the 5500 and then you'll have extra money for the GPU. Techia City actually has a video comparing the 5500, 5600, and even the 12400. So I'd highly recommend checking out that video to see the differences in our two CPUs. For cooling the 5600, we're just using a stock Ryzen cooler. And this is arguably a downgrade compared to the aesthetic. Yes, I think I'm better than you. Bill, but I think it's worth it. Sure, it's not going to cool as good as a $20 air cooler, but this is free and the cooling is at least good enough. Instead of concentrating on getting slightly better cooling temperatures compared to this build, I think the value is in saving that $20. That way we can spend that money on the more important performance components. Next up, we have the RAM. And here I'm basically using whatever the cheapest DDR4 is. And this ends up being the T-Force Vulcan Z 16 gigabyte 3200 megahertz kit that's usually available for around $35. Again, I actually got mine for about $20 in a new egg combo deal. But if you're searching for this right now, you'll see some options around 35. This isn't any better than the Glowway sticks that we use in the aesthetic build. But since we're willing to go ugly, this does allow us to save a few extra bucks. We're also saving money with the case. And once again, I'm sorry, but if you guys have been watching these videos for a while, you're probably sick of hearing this, but this is none other than the Deep Cool Matrix 40, again. And they're playing the same song over and over and over and over and over again. The fact remains that this is just one of the best valued micro ATX cases on the market right now, as it's actually been pretty decent quality and it sometimes dips below $40 as well. I scooped this off Newegg for 38 bucks this time, but the one drawback is that it only includes one fan here in the back. You can get away with this, but I'd recommend either finding two extra 120s that you have laying around from a previous project or maybe an old case, or just spending the single digit amount of dollars to buy them from somewhere like eBay. I ended up putting two here up in the front. That way we have a nice positive airflow setup here. But again, I wouldn't say it's 100% required, but you probably should. So now that we've saved money on the RAM, cooler, and case, that means we have a little bit of extra money to play with for our GPU. This may not sound like a huge upgrade, but again, we're only spending $600 on these PCs. When we have $250 to spend versus the 200 on this one, that's a good upgrade that I'm happy with. With $250 to spend, I consider the RX 7600 the best available card on the market. And this is indeed a good bit of a boost over the RX 6600. Now, of course, if you do want to buy used, then you can certainly find an even better value with maybe a used RX 6700 XT, but this is still a pretty solid card for the price. Head to head, we're about to see the differences between the RX 6600 and RX 7600. And it's actually probably a bit bigger than what you originally were thinking. Before that though, here's what the parts list is looking like for our $600 pure performance build and my total price rang up to slightly less than our $600 target but I think that's fair because of the AliExpress CPU and the extra fans I threw in there. If you're copying this build for yourself you might be slightly over $600. Either way the zoomed out big picture difference between these two builds is pretty simple. When you spend the extra money on aesthetics a realistic CPU and GPU combo would be the Ryzen 5 5500 and RX 6600 and if you skip the aesthetics then you can do a slight increase to both of those parts with a 5600 and a 7600. We're not going to see a drastic resolution level changing of difference here, but this will indeed be a different gameplay experience. We'll start with 3 Mark's Time Spy as our consistent baseline benchmark per usual, and our 
$600 aesthetic build scored a pretty solid score of 8,013 and our performance build got a whopping 10,317. That's actually a bigger than expected 29% average increase, but let's see if that trend continues during the actual gaming benchmarks. First up, we have Helldivers 2, and when using 1080p medium settings, we got right on the money at 60 FPS for the aesthetic build, but 74 FPS with the performance build. 23% increase, again, very solid. Here we have Starfield, and we're not using any upscaling here to give us a boost, and in 1080p with low settings again, we got right around that 60 FPS mark with the aesthetic build, but then a huge boost up to 80 FPS with the performance, another 27% increase. After that, we tested Cyberpunk 2077, and we could actually crank the settings up to 1080p high for this one, 64 FPS with the aesthetic build, and 87 FPS with the performance build. Here's the rest of the games that we tested, and honestly, I was pretty optimistic about the jumps ahead of time, but these are even more impressive than what I originally thought. Now, make no mistake, all of these FPS averages are still really good on the aesthetic build. You can play absolutely any title in 1080p with 60 FPS, but here's the notion chart of all of our benchmarks, and here on the right-hand side is the percentage increase. Other than Counter-Strike, on average, every single game tested between 16 to 45% better, which is honestly pretty wild. On average, we saw a pretty beefy boost in the pure performance PC, but obviously it won't look as good sitting on top of your desk. All right, so now I wanna hear from you guys about which build you would prefer if you had $600 to spend. I've discovered over these past months that it seems like the majority of the internet prefers just getting as much performance as possible, but I'm still sticking with the aesthetics over everything mindset, and my vote would still actually be the white build. I mean, sure, I do understand that I could be getting a few extra frames here, but this build can still play every title in 1080p, and this is a build that I'm gonna be proud of showing off to my friends when they come over and just sitting next to it every single day while I'm working and gaming. The good news is that both of these builds have a wide open upgrade path in the future as you could easily swap in a 5800X3D, double the RAM to 32 gigabytes, or even upgrade the GPU. Builds like this can grow with you over time, and even if you go down the price to performance route now, you could potentially add a few aesthetic pieces over time as well. And another thing that can grow with you is Swift Do PDF. Most of us just need a PDF viewer and sometimes an editor, but this software provides you with all the tools that you may need in the future. This is the ultimate solution for your PDF documents because because you can edit, convert, view, compress, merge, e-sign, and even integrate AI in here as well. Swiftu is an efficient, lightweight, and powerful software. It's secure and reliable, and I'll have a link down in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. And if you do just want to spend a little bit of extra money compared to these builds, then definitely check out my $750 build guide video, which is on the screen now.